Hey, hey, welcome back to another unbelievable edition uh, of Eight Good Minutes. And we are live from different locations. This is a, an experiment of sort, but uh, we know it's going to be great. I'm David Hall here today with Mark and Tannis. We have two special guests on the show. And um, interestingly enough, uh, just this subject today, I think is going to be right in their wheelhouse. So uh, Tannis, how about a little introduction, Hall Financial style, where you know, you might go ahead and serve up your uh, favorite fast food and favorite movie in addition to an introduction on yourself. Oh, goodness. Well, I yes. wasn't prepared for that. It's been two years okay. since I've had to do that. <laughs> um, so my uh, my title here with Hall Financial is Engagement Activator. So um, leave that to your imagination. Um, as far as uh, favorite fast food, I, I'd have to go with the Hall Financial fan favorite of Taco Bell. Uh, I don't eat fast food often, but if that's the go-to. Um, and as far as favorite movie, it just kind of depends on, you know, what's the flavor of the week. And I usually go more so with TV shows. Uh, I'm a big fan of Schitt's Creek. Okay, yeah, that's one of my favorites as well. And um, just celebrated your two-year anniversary. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Mark Gildersleeve is with us today. Mark, a little introduction on yourself, please. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for allowing me to be on your podcast today. Uh, yeah, Mark for Gildersleeve, sure. I've been here about three years and been working with David for uh, a lot longer than that on quite a few things. I'm the, the Vice President of Marketing and Strategy for Hall Financial and um, really enjoy just being here and a lot of things we got going on. So for movie right now, I'm kind of like Tanis, I changed, but I'm going to go Shawshank Redemption. I think it's okay. a phenomenal movie. And I'm going to change my fast food up for something I have often been ridiculed of, but I'm going to go with Arby's because it has a nostalgic sense to me when I used to go with my dad and we'd get the Arby's five for five roast beef sandwiches back in the day and a Jamocha shake. Very specific. Okay. Very specific. Yes. And I don't know that you've been ridiculed. I mean, I think there was some teasing, some light teasing that happened, uh, but uh, glad Glad that it brings back some nice memories and uh, welcome to the show. We're glad you're both here. Uh, this week, we're, you know, every week we talk about a little different subject uh, that we think is important to either growth or things that we think are important about how, um, you know, team members should behave or grow into or whatever it is. And this week, we're going to talk a little bit about self confidence and self growth. Uh, and these are two subjects that are near and dear to my heart. I think that, you know, growth is just, um, boy, I don't know. It's just a, maybe the most important component of a lot of things that I think about day to day in terms of becoming great, you know, sort of getting to, you're not really where you want to be. You're always sort of where you're at and getting there is like, I don't know, part of the, maybe the whole fun of everything that you do is the growth part, I guess. You know, Mark or Tannis, if either one of you want to take this on at first in terms of uh, maybe how you think about the importance of self-growth in the workplace in particular, and then maybe something, um, you know, outside of work, because these are concepts that we talk about at the office that I think are really important. Take it away, Tannis. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, positivity is something that energizes and inspires me. So, um, you know, pushing to get that 1% better every day. I think we talk about that here a lot on continuous learning and other things uh, that we do here at Health Financial. And, you know, just really being willing to fail and then get back up again is part of what how I've found my confidence. And um, I think it's important to grow. And we, we talk often about, you know, sports analogies. And, you know, one I'd like to kind of put a different spin on is like thinking about video gamers and like leveling up, getting that achievement a lot unlocked and really just pushing yourself to um, that next level, whether it's, you know, reaching a goal or, you know, setting different goals and checking off those boxes of that's complete and what's my next step and just always, you know, climbing to better yourself. Yeah, it's great. I agree. One of the things that I've said, uh, I haven't said this in a while, but I used to, you just jogged my memory, is that the the path to success happens after you trip up, you know, and like every nobody wants to trip up, but everybody does trip up. And so, you know, getting to where you want to go is never a straight line up. There's always setbacks and it's how you sort of respond to those setbacks that I think are the most important thing. And 
again, another sports analogy. Mark, how do you think about it? I think, I mean, to me, I was thinking about this, you know, as we were coming into this podcast, and the key to self-confidence and personal growth to me is preparation. Like, having a plan, um, knowing what you want to accomplish. Like, I was actually sorting through, uh, I made a, a plan recently that every day I'm going to do one tangible thing at my house that, like, I need to do. So, like, small example, yesterday I cleaned out my nightstand. Had a bunch of, like, tax returns and just things for years. And I had found some paperwork that was, like, super interesting to me. Um, I actually found all my, uh, my job offers from my entire career, and I kept them. So I had the whole financial one, which was fun. I actually had a note from you from when I used to consult with you that was uh, with her a gift card to go out to a nice dinner at Tallulah that you had given me. But I, I remember found that. a lot of paperwork that was, like, plans that I had laid out. So I had, like, years of financial goals. Like, here's what I'm going to accomplish this year. I had it written down. I checked off each month when I made, you know, I want to. Uh, put X into my home equity this this year. Each month, that means I got to put X in and checking off each month and following the path. Like, it was interesting to see that, you know, that's the way I think now, but I was doing that five, six, seven years ago. And when I think about, like, you know, growth within the office, it's, you know, I want to be a great leader. There's things that I don't do well. There's things that I do well. But, you know, like we're doing uh, 360s right now where we're getting peer evaluations and, like, I'm looking forward to hearing what I can work on and then developing a plan to work on those things. So um, one thing you actually told me a couple years ago was, you know, change is very difficult. Like as human beings, we're, we're wired certain ways, but things that can create change in, in your life aren't always good things. Like you need a dramatic shift in something that causes you to actually change. And, um, you know, we have these things each day that we learn from. And I think that's important to just understand for your growth, like take everything as an opportunity and you know, Tannis used the example of 1% better every day. Like, I use the example of doing one tangible thing each day to make my life better. So, um, kind of, you know, it's a good time to do this, too, because I'm kind of recently recommitting to a lot of these things. And I think as individuals, we've all got to have a plan and, uh, and follow that plan to get to where we want to be. I love it. It's great. I mean, I, I can't decide what I want to do more as a follow-up podcast. What else is in Mark's nightstand? <laughs> or, or what are the other things that you're going to be doing around your place. I just think people would be very interested if we got a little TV camera over there and sort of followed you around your place. Like what what today is gonna be the thing you're gonna do? You did the nightstand, what's coming today? A uh, big coat closet. So I've got all my suits and hats and shoes in a big coat closet. And I want to arrange those and probably donate a lot of the suits because unfortunately they either don't fit or they are outdated. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah, you gotta clean that out. Tannis, let's talk for a second. Uh, you know, it's eight good minutes, so it goes by fast. Mentors. I think mentors, having mentors is an incredibly important thing. It has been for me. I mean, I've had people that I've been able to learn from, um, look up to, gain knowledge, you know, even they give you confidence. What's your thought about, you know, mentors and the importance of mentors in terms of self-growth? And then, Mark, if you want to jump in as well, because I just think this is an incredibly important thing to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I think that we all look at certain people who have different attributes that we, you know, adore or aspire to, to have. And I think for me, and I, I use the word adore because um, my mother is one for me, and I feel like um, she would probably be surprised to hear that, which sounds a little crazy, but, you know, there she has always been great at not only telling me and coaching me on like things to do, but also what not to do. And, you know, I think that um, just having someone to look up to, it, it helps push you to, to those next steps and the next level and um, coaching you along with the way. You know, we don't all know everything, right? And, you know, there's some things that come easier and some things that come harder. And I think it's, you know, making decisions that are right and not always easy. So having someone who's been there, done that, um, can help, you know, grow you into to who you want to be and what you aspire to be. So I think that it's incredible to have that in your personal life and your work life, um, you know, to just get you, as we're saying, build on that self-confidence, your growth, and get you to the next level. Couldn't agree more. I think, I think very well said, thing, Mark. I think the easiest way to put it for me is like, uh, it's a very common thing to say, but if you're the smartest person in the room, you're not in the right room. Mm -hmm. Like, so getting people that are better than you in your life that you can, you know, lean on, whether mm -hmm. it's a, being a great father or a great person or a great businessman or a, a leader, like having people 
in your circle that can actually help you. Like you're not going to get better by surrounding yourself with people that just tell you what you want to hear or lean on you. So having people in your life that you can go to to help better yourself, I think, is really important. Yeah, it's that quote, you'll learn nothing if you think you're right all the time. <laughs> Very well said. Uh, well, another unbelievable edition of eight good minutes it goes by like fast and it's always 10 minutes and by the way for all my buddies out there that like to comment and say how come eight good minutes went 10 minutes i know that we know it goes over a little bit we're aware of that uh mark tanis thanks so much for being on the show this week and uh, bringing a lot of value to the listeners thank you thanks for having us you got it all right we'll see you next time on eight good minutes